it's me again. Today is Sunday, and it's a somber Patriot Day, September 11th. So it's a very somber Patriot Day. I certainly remember exactly where I was on the date of September 11th. I'm sure a lot of you who were alive back then will never forget what you were doing ex- that exact moment in time. It's- so it's Patriot Day. For those who don't know of September 11th in the United States. But let's do a video today about MMTLP. Because there's a lot of FUD. And I've been asked questions about, you know, is this true? Is this not true? It's a lot easier sometimes to make a video than to type out giant walls of text and not visually explain things. Things can get lost in translation. So, MMTLP, the S1A was released last Tuesday, day after Labor Day, when the market, pre-market hours, there were some changes that I talked about. The most pertinent to us is that the trading of MMTLP will cease at least the day before the record date, the new record date. So if new record date's Thursday, trading's going to at least seize on Wednesday at close of market. It might be sooner than that, but it's at least one day. So let's talk about this S1A some more and also rehash some older Torchlight presentations about the other wells because a lot of this FUD right now is, oh no, <laughs> Why are only two wells, you know, completed for hydrocarbons? First, let me make it clear. It's not two wells out of all the wells that they've drilled. These are two out of the four new wells. It explains in the S1 that there were some problems. This could have been supply chain issues. This also explains why they didn't do horizontal wells for everything, but they did a horizontal well for the one. I'll pull it up here. Back in February, they submitted the permit to drill horizontally. And you're not going to drill horizontally unless there's hydrocarbons there. People think that's the only well that's viable with hydrocarbons. Uh -uh. No, there's other wells. I'll cite it here in the 2020 Torchlight presentation. They talk about some other wells that were drilled. These were the Cactus A35 well. As well as the uh, Rich A11 well. And if you look at this, it says it confirmed in the Barnett and Woodford shales. It's Barnett and Woodford, as you know. Different shales have different names, right? Like you have the, uh, you know, Okoda shale, Wolfbone shale, you have the Pennsylvania shale. Different shales, different names. Wolf Pen, Wolf Berry, you know, Sperry shale. It's, It's not... The names of these shales are not indicative all over the world. It's not like every place in the world is equidistantly covered with these shales. No. Some shales only exist in certain places. Other shales exist in other places. They're almost like a locale, a species of locale. Remember, oil and gas that you get today comes from mass extinctions from coral reef beds. And coral reefs quickly going extinct and then getting covered up. None of the oil that we use really pertains to the dinosaurs, although the, you know, some of the newer plays, newer geologically speaking, were in the very early Triassic era. But other than that, they were pretty much mostly before the age of the dinosaurs as we know it. Anyways, I'm getting off track here. It says in this presentation that Oil and gas, both oil and gas was confirmed in these shells across the property. If we pull up the S1A, it says that there's new discoveries in new shells. What those new shells are, we don't know. But there are new discoveries of hydrocarbons and newer shells. Is this oil? Is this gas? Is this both oil and gas? Who knows? 
Who knows? Now, we get to the next question. Bird Lady, none of the oil, none of the wells have oil in them, which is untrue. We know this because some of the wells they give in thousand cubic feet, that's gas. Some of them they give in barrels, and it says BBL barrels, that's oil. Other ones they say BOE, which is barrel oil equivalent, that's oil plus gas. And if you look on these presentations, I also cite the Next Bridge website, which said 3.2 billion barrels of oil. That's about what I calculated it out to be, 3.2 billion barrels of oil based on some stoichiometry or oil and gas plays that had were more productive and they had a better timeline and a better, you know, more established sense of how much oil they could pr produce out of a given area. Applying those formulas, you know, we were able to rough guesstimate. I said 3.1 billion barrels of oil and the website said 3.2. So that was pretty close. It was a website, yes. And the website is down. I'm expecting to get more PR once the S1A is approved. Let's talk about some more of the S1A. If you will look at this S1A, it talks about how they use that, that loan from Meta to help prepare sites for 2022 drilling plan. When you go to drill, you're not just drilling random spots. Even today, you don't just do a geological survey. Today, to drill, that's where 3D seismic technology comes in. You can use 3D seismic technology to help drill. And some places, you can go back to old places, and maybe they weren't that far off. Maybe in some places, they were far off. That's the beauty of new technology. It says, though, in this S1A that they were getting ready to drill. They were prepping the sites. Remember how I never took it down. I said we're going to drill July, the July. They were. They were prepping the sites. It says here until June at least. Remember I said June? They were prepping those sites. And they changed it to July because we didn't. We were getting close and we didn't hear anything PR-wise. So I changed it to July to be conservative. But up until June, they were prepping those sites. So they were doing work out there. People also doubted me about the water. And they said, bird lady, there's no water out there. Prove it. And here's some aquifer studies that I read. Um, I should put these somewhere. I downloaded them. But here's some aquifer studies. There are books about the aquifers. And I've cited some articles, but here we go. Here's proof that says that there's water there. Fresh and salt water. Fresh water is great. That's gold. You can use it to make the drilling mud. You can use this water to save money. You don't have to truck in water. You know how expensive it is to truck things now? That's crazy. You'll save a lot of money. And I actually did a study on this, and I did some math, where I said you'd save quite a few millions of dollars by having water on site to frack with because you didn't have to truck it in. That was when gas wasn't as expensive as it is now. But the Texas Environmental Quality Commission says you can't put the water back into the ground. So it's either going to be plugged and abandoned or used for fresh and salt water. Why would you plug and abandon this well when you have a great water source right there? Water's liquid gold. But, but keep in mind, this prospectus is written by lawyers who... Meta can't have any oil and gas associated sales on their books or else they'll lose that Canadian funding for green companies. As a result, this is written very, you know, pessimistically, this S1A and the S1. But there is water there, and that's exciting because I made a video of the secrets of the Or Grande, and it talked about the water. Okay, now, here is an important one because I'm going to see this as when the spin out happens, a lot of people are going to claim FUD on it, but it's not. Now, we talked about how there are different other stakeholders in the Oro Grande. Torchlight owns revenue interest, that means royalty wise, their share of the actual oil and gas rights. You own that property, you own the oil and gas. They own, sorry, 49%. 0.8% of the oil and gas, Torchlight does. We do. We're Torchlight. Or 
next bridge. Then you have McCabe. He owns, you know, he has royalties, but then he owns a percent. You have miscellaneous royalty holders, and then you have when Torchlight did their debt to stock conversion. They're according to this article in the S one A. What they're gonna do is everybody who has working interest. I'm really excited about this. Okay, this this points hands down that. They're prepping for a sale. They're prepping for a sale because everybody who has working interest will trade their working interest for shares, common shares of Nextbridge, not preferred shares, but common shares of Nextbridge. People are going to scream. This is dilutive. If there was a sale, it's the same percentage. It doesn't change your working interest percentage. Everybody who has working interest gets shares in equal percentage a pro rata share of next bridge so torchlight had 66.5 percent of the working interest according to this right at the time that you know the merger happened okay times the you know the whole shebang common shares of next bridge to sell this whole thing you know our percentage we get 165 million so how many shares will there be well, you know, you sell for X, so you have to... This is how I learned how to do algebra. So, kids, if you don't know how to do algebra, this is how I learned with story problems like this. You have to get X on one side of the equation. Here, you're multiplying. You just move it over under, you divide it. You do the opposite. So, instead of multiplying it here, you, you divide this number by that. It goes into the denominator. So... We divide this by 0.665, and we get 248.12. To check your answer, plug it back in. 248.12 times 0.665, you'll get this number. This is how I learned how to do algebra. You have to isolate the variable on one side of the equation and do the opposite of what it tells you. That's how I learned how to do algebra, kids. I hope this helps. Next bridge is going to show 248 million shares on spin out. People will scream, dilution, dilution, dilution. Oh my gosh, dilution. Don't listen to them because you still have 66.5. That, that number did not change, ladies and gentlemen. That number did not change. Also, this makes me very happy. And this is why I've been so excited lately. Because when they sell this for shares, they exchange next for shares for big oil shares, right? Who's ever interested in buying this? We'll convert the shares. You know, we'll we'll say here, so we'll trade the shares. There'll be a stock swap, right? A non-taxable event. Because of this, notice how it's working interest, not royalty holders. That means it's a higher dividend price for us because I was like, well, are the royalty holders going to sell? Are they not going to sell? The sale in this case, this is my big evidence for the sale in this case will not have the royalty holders selling. They will keep their royalties in this. Good for them because University Lands, if a big oil buys this and develops it, they don't have to lift a finger and they're going to get that sweet, they'll get the lease fees and they'll get that sweet royalty check from this being developed. But the fact that royalty holders are not selling, they're not getting any conversion into next purchase common stock. Cha ching, cha ching, cha ching, bigger dividend prices for us. And I can focus a little bit more on saying, okay, well, it's going to be this and this. And now I know with that one to one conversion, as the S1 says, plus this, about what it'll be. Now it does say that some of the executives will get the the options exercised. We'll have to figure that out. It does say 3% about that. But still, we know also this is more than that 225 million of the shares in Nextbridge that were there. Hence, they had to bump it up to 500 million. So there you go. It's When Nextbridge converts, it's going to say it's about 248 million and change. Because all the other stakeholders, you know, McCabe, Wolfbone, 
and a couple others. And here's another thing that the S1 talks about is about the gas pipeline. We have some infrastructure on the property. Is that completely barren? We can hook up to a gas pipeline. It does cost money to hook up to this gas pipeline, but it is there to be hooked up to, which is great. This way you don't have to truck out gas. It's on the pipeline. That's money saving. That's pretty good. When you got a pipeline right on your property, we have water there and we got a gas pipeline there we can hook up on. All right, guys, that's it for today. And I hope you're just excited as I am because we, one, realize that royalty holders aren't selling. That gives a higher dividend price for us. Royalty holders aren't selling. Great. Two. We know what the FUD's going to entail. The FUD coming up is going to be this number. They're going to say, oh, they're diluting your shares. They're not diluting it because it's right here saying that we're going to hold the same amount, 66.5%. So that's great. All right, guys, that's it for today. I will see you soon. Goodbye.